Hello and welcome to another yin class. I have a lovely class for you today and we may as well just get started. Make sure you've got your blankets, your blocks, your bolsters, whatever you have to help you feel cozy today. And we'll start with Anahatasana. So this one is sometimes known as puppy dog pose and we start on hands and knees, but I like to shift my whole pose back onto my mat, the very back. And then from hands and knees, my hips stay exactly where they are, and just my hands walk forward. And I'm lowering my chest and forehead all the way down to the mat. So I'm trying to lower my forehead to touch the mat, and I'm trying to reach my chest down towards the mat. If this doesn't stretch very much, then I could maybe go further, reaching the armpits down towards the floor and the chin towards the floor. And we just hold here. So this should feel nice. So not too intense. Having said that, we don't hold this one as long as the other ones. Maybe about a minute. And just softening and relaxing. to come out we slowly slowly come on up back to hands and knees and then we'll prepare for the next one and we call that one banana asana so <laughs> asana means pose so it's basically banana pose and we lie all the way back and I'm just gonna move my pointy tail because we are lying back all the way down and for this one it's a side stretch. So what we'll do is laying all the way flat on the back, keep the hips as though they're stuck in mud, they're stuck on the mat. But what we're doing is moving the feet and the shoulders over to the right. So I'll step my feet to the right. I'm gonna move my right foot and then my left foot will kind of glue itself to my foot. And then I'll lift up the rest of my body and then I'm going to reach my arms above head and I like to clasp onto the elbows. So as you can see, this is a nice side body stretch, but we want the, the shoulders to remain flat on the floor, the hips to remain flat on the floor and both feet to be flat on the floor. And we feel a nice side body stretch and we just hang out here for a bit. And as always, if the body gives you more, you might be able to Move a little bit further into it. And we just hang out here for a little bit. And if you take a couple deep breaths here, you might feel a little bit of a stretch, an extra little stretch in that left side body. This is really good to help breathing because it stretches the intercostal muscles, meaning the muscles between each rib. And the more flexible our ribs are, the more capacity our lungs can have. So the, the freer and easier it is to breathe, which always feels nice. And then to come out, I like to scoop my belly in to stabilize the low back and then slowly bring everything back to center. In order to be sure that we're squared up, let's bend the knees, hug the knees in, just a little rock side to side. So let's make sure we're completely square. And then we head into the other side. So we'll straighten through the legs and then Lift the shoulders up and over to the left this time. But the hips remain where they are. And then the feet walk all the way over to the left. And then we'll clasp the elbows. And then same, same, trying to keep the shoulders on the floor. And the hips on the floor. 
and then a few deep breaths here. Just a little bit longer. This one feels so nice. <laughs> the goal is to not fall asleep. Okay, let's slowly come on out. I quite like that one. <laughs> it feels very comfortable. And then once we're squared up, we'll bend the knees in and hug them. Maybe a little rock side to side. And then to come completely out of this pose, we can roll over onto the right side, pause for a moment, and then slowly press yourself all the way up and we'll prepare for the next one. And we're ready for toe squat. So this one is as lovely as it sounds. <laughs> we start on hands and knees, and then we tuck the toes under and simply sit back onto the toes. So the one thing we want to notice though is if the feet are straight up and down behind you. So we don't want the heels tipping too far in towards each other or out. We want the heels right above the toes so the feet are square sit back. If it's too much, you can lean forward. Otherwise, all the weight back onto the heels. And we wait and we hold. So this one, I also like to just take a peek at my toes. I want all the toes pointing forward. So I even like to go so far as to come all the way up into a squat position and have my feet, I get really meticulous about it. So I have my feet just a tiny bit apart, not completely together, but not quite hips width apart. And then all the toes are pointing forward and then slowly and carefully, the knees go back down. And then it feels awkward, which that's how I know I'm doing it right. Really, really awkward toe stretch. And this is just really good for that big toe joint, getting the flexibility in there. It's probably the best stretch in the world to prevent plantar fasciitis too, which is just nice. If you don't know what that is, that's fantastic. Uh, it, it affects a lot of people where that bottom band, that ligament on the bottom of the foot can become irritated and it's not pleasant. So if you don't know what it is, that's great. Do this and you will probably never have to deal with it. And if you have had it in the past, you know that you might want to do this one to prevent that from ever happening again. <laughs> so it's one of those stretches where that's what I love about yoga. You know, it's not just all about aesthetics or, or that kind of thing. It's how do we keep you healthy? How do we prevent injury? How do we increase your range of motion? Even in the, even the muscles between the ribs, like the last stretch, you know, it's so that you can breathe freer. You know, it's, it's all about health and longevity of a, of a person. And I love that about it. Mostly I'm just yammering away to try to pass the time so you'll forget that we're in toe stretch, which can feel a little bit intense. And if you've had to come out already, no problem. This is one we want to work up towards. I like to hold this one. I like to hold all of them for minimum a minute and not have it too intense. So you can hold it for longer and then up to a few minutes actually. This one is good for. So we'll just hang out a little bit longer for today little bit longer, almost done. But when we do come out, know that it can almost feel more weird coming out than being in it. So if your toes feel tingly, that's normal. It's totally okay. It'll go away momentarily. Okay, let's do it. Let's slowly, slowly, slowly move forward. I like to move forward a little bit and then wait. And then slowly come on out a little bit and then wait. And then the rest of the way. And it's like my toes don't want to go the other way for a second. Take a minute, I come on out. <laughs> okay, so that one was awkward. Most of these are a little bit awkward and we're trying to make them as comfortable as possible. 
because we hold yin poses for longer than normal stretches, we wanna try to make them as comfortable as possible. This next one, however, is not uh, easy to find comfort, but it's so good for us, it's called ankle stretch. So we start sitting on the heels, and for most of us, this is good enough. We're just gonna stay here and not go further. Or if this is already not good for you, then this whole stretch you might wanna completely skip. So for this one, what we do is we just lean back. You might be able to clasp onto the knees, and we're stretching the ankles at this point. So holding on, it's a bit of a balance one as well. We hold. Sometimes it might feel better. I'm just thinking it might be easier to lean back onto the hands. We'll hold this one for one minute. You can hold for longer, but I know for me, I don't, I don't practice this one as much. So it's a little intense. So I'm gonna start at one minute. And we're almost up. And like always, if you need to come out a little early, no problem at all. And then to come out, we reverse course. And then I like to come up to hands and knees. And then just send one leg back with the toes tucked under. Just a little bit of a counter stretch. And other side. All right. So the next pose is called snail. Also fairly intense, but it's one of those ones I found it very intense at first and now I crave it. And so it's one where we lie on our back, lift the legs up so they're straight up to the sky, and then we lift up and over. So our feet come up and overhead. So if you're already thinking, I am not doing that, absolutely just lie on your back and we'll lift the legs up. If you're thinking, okay, I'll try this one, or I do this one all the time, or whatever you might be thinking, I like to use a blanket. Um, you can use a blanket in two different ways. One, you can have, I'll just show you lying down. If you have the blanket beneath the shoulders, but not the head, what it does is it lessens the angle of the stretch. So if you lift up and over like so, it's less of an angle when you have the shoulders up on a blanket. But what I like to do, thunk, <laughs> what, what I like to do is, I'm not super graceful, that's why I like yoga. And so I go like this with the blanket and I have it beneath my whole body because my mat is thick, but not thick enough. Actually, I'm gonna leave that out. And so uh, just for the bones, the back bones, I like to have a blanket. Actually, I like to have two blankets. A little bit wimpy. Well, maybe one's enough. No. Let me get two. I like two. There we go. That should be, that'll make for a good snail. Okay. This is the one where I feel like we need like an entire runway for because we've got to get the legs all the way over to the other side as well. So we lay back. And then I want my shoulders and my head on the blanket. And then to get into this pose, once again, if you think, no way, Jose, I'm not doing that, this is where we stay. This is called legs up the wall pose, and you can actually do this one against a wall. You can scooch up against a wall, and this feels lovely, and then rest the legs against the wall, and you'll get most of the same benefits. And if you want to go further, a little bit of momentum, not too much momentum, a little bit. And I like to bend the knees a little bit to get that little bit of momentum. I'm, I'm really trying to stress a little bit. If you do a little bit of momentum and you don't make it, come back out, right? A little bit. And then if you do, you catch the hips. And then maybe we go further. We just hang out here for a bit, trying not to move the neck. Once you're here and you start to feel comfortable-ish, 
you could head into a different variation of this pose. You could bend the knees if you want to. You could have the arms away from you or towards the feet. And we just find that stillness. And same as all the other poses, if you need to come out, try to come out slowly and then just wait once you're out. Otherwise, hang out a little bit longer. I like to kind of alternate, bend the knees a little, and then straighten. Trying not to move too much though, finding stillness, which is not my specialty, but really trying. Last few moments here. And to come out, scoop the belly in, and then trying to use your arms as landing gear, and maybe bend the knees, try to go slow, 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 slow. And then we just hang out here, wait for a few moments with the knees bent, feet on the floor. That one, it feels odd. So does the toe stretch. This one and the toe stretch both kind of just feel just different after. It's not bad, it's not good, it just feels a little strange. So for those reasons, for both of those two poses, I like to just take a few moments to do organic movements and or be still. So for this one, I like to roll my head side to side. And then this one rolls right into our, I believe it's our last one, double checking. Yes, it is. Our last one is Shavasana, final resting pose. So we tend to do this one in most of our yoga classes at the very end. All traditional yoga classes end with this. You can stay where you are and then just extend arms and legs. I'm going to remove my, my blankets because they're in the way here. And then I'm going to re-situate myself on the floor. And Shavasana is meant to be completely flat on the floor. However, if there's any tension in the back at all, feel free to bend the knees with the feet on the floor and allow the knees to tip in towards each other. You could place a bolster beneath the knees or some pillows, that kind of thing and extend the legs for support that way, or this is a way without bolsters. Or if your back feels fine, extend the legs and step them apart a little bit. Same with the arms. We want the arms along our sides stepped out a little bit, palms facing up, so the shoulder blades are beneath you, as though you've got just good posture lying on the floor. And then close the eyes, so this is the important bit. And we do Shavasana for a couple reasons, mostly to the oversimplified version is to remove fatigue. You know, usually when we go to the gym or some sort of exercise program, we feel tired at the end. So yoga allows us to 
regenerate a little bit. And the other reason is because what we do right before we rest, we retain that information better. So what we're doing is we're doing kind of a structured nap a little bit, not quite. That's an oversimplified version, but, but a little rest so that we can assimilate what we've learned, let the body absorb all the new shapes. And then a third reason is to create a delineation at the end of your yoga practice before you go out and about for the rest of your day. It just marks the end of your practice. And while we're here, we're trying to not think anything at all and find that space between sleep and awake. What does that mean? It just means try to be as relaxed as possible so that you're too relaxed to create thoughts. Completely relaxed, but not falling asleep. It's that that funny state right before we fall asleep that we're aiming for. And that's what helps the body assimilate those poses and makes us feel the most well rested. And when we are ready to come out, let's do so slowly. We'll Wiggle the fingers and the toes. And gently roll your head from side to side. And then reach your arms above head on the floor for a big stretch, feeling totally refreshed. And then bend your knees in one at a time. And gently roll over to the right side and just pause there for a moment. And then slowly press yourself up to a comfortable seated position. I like to end my yoga practice in a cross-legged position, especially after I do a full Shavasana. Palms facing up on the knees. Inhale, sitting up nice and tall, and exhale, softly close the eyes. And just take a final moment here to thank yourself for showing up to your practice today and for taking care of you. And slowly open the eyes. Namaste, everyone. Thank you so, so much for joining me today. That actually concludes our Yin Beginner course. So I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed making it for you. I hope you have a really good rest of your day, and I hope to see you again. Bye for now.